Do you want to create slick Spider-Man animations like this? And like this? Watch this Spider-Man animation analysis to discover how, coming right up. Hey, what's up animators? Rusty here from Rusty Animator. I've been a professional animator myself for five plus years in VFX games and TV. And in this channel, we create weekly videos that help you animate at a higher level so you can quickly reach your dream job in movies or games without massive college debt. Here you'll find a mix of how-to videos, guides, tutorials, and live events just like this one. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell below. This video is a replay of a live Spider-Man animation analysis that I did with students and members of the Rusty Animator Facebook community. And this is part two of two, so definitely check out part one if you haven't already. In each video, you're gonna learn so much that you can apply in terms of your own animation for you know stronger body mechanics and awesome demerel shots. So let's jump right in. This is a simpler version of doing a cool demerel shot. It doesn't involve a lot of camera craziness, it doesn't involve a lot of crazy body mechanics, but it's cool, it's a cool idea from a character standpoint. You know, he's Spider-Man, he's got the ability to web people. So what is a cool way that you could use that? those tools, those skills to make an animation takedown. You yank a guy over with one web, you shoot him in the face and then yank him down to the floor with it. This is unique, you know, this pull here. So, so he pulls on this shoulder to get momentum to yank him over. And these arms come across Right, so we can really see how this guy's out of control. We, he wasn't expecting this yank. And then follow up into this. Clear to camera. Perfect setup for where we want to take this animation. He double downs. Pretty simple pose. And what I love about this too is the, the way that this guy's head really leads the action because Spider-Man is pulling from here. We really feel how this head is what's coming down first and the rest of it's just kind of like staying behind. And especially here, this looks brutal at, at frame by frame. Maybe we get that kind of thing where he's just total face plants, you know, into this like S shape. The head is smashed as the, the rest of the body is trying to catch up. The legs are behind. And then as this mass comes down, this mass pops up because it already arrived first. It pulls the bouncing ball thing where it's like, you know, letting the, the recoil momentum finish off. And Spider-Man himself it, this is successful because we're going from this pose to more of this squash here. V, we get this straight stretch, this breakdown into that. And you just get this settle here after he's put all this energy into it. He's yanking down this way from the pelvis to give us some power into this move, right? It's not just the arms. And this is the icing on the cake, choosing to web the guy up so he can't move, right? This is the extra thought of really knowing who your character is. The animators on this obviously don't have to think about it too much because they've been given the fact that this is a Spider-Man game. But if you, if you are creating your demo reel shots, this is why you need to think about it so that you can think of doing fun things like this. I, I love the difference in how they fight each other, how he's doing all these, these spin kicks, like you point out, Theron. 
very very gymnastic like very uh martial arts like capoeira um like the brazilian martial art where they're like spinning off the ground all the time um and then how he just is is almost like a boxer slash wrestler um for kingpin what i don't like is this this punch So when I saw this the first time, I actually didn't even see the punch. I just saw that, like, what happened to Spider-Man. I'm like, oh, he got hit, but I didn't see what. And for me, the whole punch is lost because the thing that's moving the most is this hand as this movement starts, right? This hand is pretty still, and it's hidden in silhouette, which, again, the player could probably move around. But, like, with this hand moving so much, I'm looking here. And I'm not seeing any of this stuff going on. And all of a sudden, it's like there's a punch. Right. So that, that for me, hits a little weak. <coughs> I would probably keep this more contained, let this wind back a little bit, maybe let the chest go first as this is winding back, and maybe get that a bit higher so that from all these different angles, it's really clearly above Spider-Man's head. You know, it could, could be something more like this, right? And then that punch comes through and it's very clear. This is good. Like the, the after pose for him and how that follows through is fine. But it's the antics that bothers me. I really love showing that contact frame. I, I would just like, from an art standpoint, I'd always push for this. Like when I was doing cycles of a game studio, I was always like, you're always kind of fighting that balance of like, will this fit the, the game engine's needs where like this move has to be 12 frames. Um, and then will it fit my artistic need or like the feeling that we want to get out of this character or I'm always fighting that battle between the two where it's like, okay, but if I delete this frame and then move this thing slightly and then move that, then I can make it a little bit better with the same amount of frames that I have to work with or what, or, or whatever your limitation is. So I'm always looking for ways to, to cheat that. And um, so my instinct would be to, again, cut this, just have this frame. And then this could be a cool opportunity to maybe smear it out. so that this connects a little bit better. You might drop this lower if you're gonna cut that one frame and then smear it from there. But I think that would hit so much harder. And this grab is a bit soft. Why? I think the main problem is again, the spacing here. If you wanna grab to hit hard, you have to have broad spacing coming into the impact and that will allow it to hit the other the other part of this that will help this to work is spider-man's reaction to it so right now i feel like this hulk of a man like grabs him and then spider-man just kind of like that's nice thanks for grabbing my throat um it would be so awesome if we went from this shape and then when he got grabbed, we went into that, a curve reversal. This is like a posing problem, a breakdown problem, like going into this. And then there's that, that recoil there. You can come back up into this position. Not a ton of work. It's just thinking about that impact, making that stronger and using the body of the two characters to, to, to sell it. And, um, that also gives you somewhere to go for the spacing to, to overshoot with his hands to be like coming in really fast. Like there's a big jump here for the hit and then you overshoot pushing his body down and then you kind of settle back into this. You know, it's kind of extreme with my drawings, but I hopefully you get the idea. Often I find too, when I'm, when I'm trying to tweak my animations to make them better, 
I'll say, oh, yeah, I need to add more shape change for the spine. And then once I add that in there, I'm like, oh, these hands don't feel right at all. Like it, it makes it makes those problems even more obvious because it's like the main part of the action now feels good, but the rest of it doesn't connect. And and you start looking at at the other parts of the body that you can use. And and so what what you might do in those cases is have him like really get plastered back with his hands. They're just delayed a little bit. And then they really snap forward to try to get a hold of this guy. And we want the same feeling that that Kingpin is supposed to have when he grabs him, right? Where it's like snap on to hang on to the guy. All right, let me ask you. Are the animation insights that I'm sharing in part two of this Spider-Man animation analysis helpful? Yes or no? Let me know in the YouTube card above or comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. The last clip I'm going to cover tonight is this coolness right here. So again, this is an epic demo reel shot. Like if you had all this on your reel, it'd be so sweet, obviously. Of course, you would never have this idea in the first place if you never thought of a character like Spider-Man, like we've been talking about all night. And you'll notice how we've transitioned again from this pose, this pose that you see again and again in a different way, transitions into like a handstand, really letting the upper body lead the action because he's throwing his his upper body weight into the spin handstand i bet you they looked at some gymnastic reference for this somewhere that that's where they're getting this from so we like we get the we're getting to this shape faster i i just love the delay on the hips how the hips are really like swinging like around like pendulum style for this what would you do to like make a shot like this in the first place for for your reel i would totally break it up into chunks like we talked about from this to this you just spend like two weeks just figuring out how this works if it's so complicated to you like you you don't think you could do it just just break this down and then once you feel good about that section figure out okay let me let me try this This is a bit cheaty, cheaty actually, but it's like you could maybe make it a little more Spider-Man crawly where he like crawls over his, his chest, but I like it that he's like crawling on top of this guy into a squash. This to this would be, that alone would be a cool Demerol shot for an in-game animator. You know, working out this um, tumble back into the same pose again all day long. This also isn't that difficult. It's a it's a hop almost a squash for that stretch into that squash. It's just a hop forward with a, a little bit of a spin on it to get him into that position. We get this reach. What I like too is how the hips are a bit straight and there's more twist here. You could exaggerate that a little bit. You could probably get the hips up a little bit. You could probably twist this more, but it works. And then he just tosses them out. Uh, and this is your money moment right here. So again, how do we how do we think of doing this in the first place? Well, we want to hit this pose. We work from this pose backwards. It's just a hop up with a twist on the hips from here.
and then you do that time warp slowdown like we talked about earlier. Working from this pose to this pose. And when I'm thinking about how do I make those poses connect, I'm just, I really am thinking about how am I gonna sell the weight between the feet so I don't have as many foot plant, like 50,000 foot plants. I wanna do it in as uh, few foot plants as possible. A, it makes them feel acrobatic and smooth. B, it's easier for me. And it just makes it feel, um, feel fluid and organic. So it's just one foot plant here to give him this, this stretch into a squash. And you could have squashed more actually. I think I feel like it would have been even better if we got that hip a little further over and then knee out. Because if like, just, just stare at this hip and you'll see that it doesn't go up and down a whole lot, but you still buy it. So the thing I wanna point out here, why this, this still works is a lot of people would miss how the hips are involved here. They would be so focused on getting these, this hand in, into play and having that work. But the reason why this, this feels realistic is because of this bounce that's happening here. He goes down and comes up. And I think what a, what would have been nicer here is he, he feels always like he's kind of like tilted to this side. And then when he, he pulls back, he's still like tilting to the side. I think I would have chosen an angle that was better. Um, maybe before he yanks back, in, somewhere in here, I would have him tilt off and then come back into this one to the right, right? I think that would make it feel more dynamic. You could get, even if it was subtle, it would give you a little bit of an arc in there through that move to make it more organic. But again, this is a, a super minor thing. But yeah. The first time you saw this, you're like, man, this is crazy complicated. How would I ever do that? But if you start breaking it down piece by piece, you can see where it's manageable, where you can create something like this. That wraps up part two of the Spider-Man animation analysis. But now I have a question for you. You've already heard a lot of animation insights from me in this, uh, especially if you've seen part one of the Spider-Man animation analysis. But what is your favorite animation out of all that we talked about? Let me know why. I'd love to hear what you think and talk with you about it and get to know a little bit about you, your animation background and you know where you're coming from. And also remember that you know as an animator, giving feedback and sharing your insights and your opinions not only helps other animators, but it also helps you to remember what you just learned and keep improving your animation on it. So definitely leave you know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell for more videos just like this in the future. And if you want to be part of the next live animation analysis, join the Rusty Animator Facebook group. Or, you know, you can click for part one of this video here or one of our other videos. And until next time, happy animating.